Welcome once again to Yates American J180 restoration. In this episode, we do some work on the motor stator and on some threads on the spindle. But we finally get the motor put together and we uh, get it running. When I was testing the motor before disassembling, the, the rotor was rubbing on the stator. And I wanted to take one last check of the run out on the spindle. So the spindle is really good. And I think what happened when the machine took a fall the stator uh, got bent a little bit, and so uh, when we put the stator on, we may have to make some adjustments to how it fits so that it'll be centered about the spindle. I'm going to use this, this gear puller that I use for removing the rotor to temporarily hold the stator in place while we take some measurements on the spindle. Okay, I know this isn't real high tech, but this is what I have to work with. So this is a high density polyethylene disc that I machine, and it fits on the end of the spindle. And I'm going to use it to measure around the perimeter with some feeler gauges. Now this is where the machine took the hit when it fell. And interestingly, this area is where it looked like the rotor was rubbing on the stator when, when I was testing the motor earlier. So I've got 87 thousandths built up here, and it's fitting in on this side until I get to about here, until I get to about here, and then it's not fitting at all on this side. It looks like maybe, I don't know, 15 or, thousandths, 15 or so thousandths of an inch uh, too thick. So I'm thinking I need to machine some off of this face uh, on this end here. So that, that will basically rotate the, the stator a little bit that direction. Um, so I'm gonna machine, I'm gonna grind some material off of this and then we'll refit it and see how it goes. Okay, I've got the four locations where I need to do some grinding, or the three locations. Uh, and I've got a piece of sheet metal taped in place here to protect the windings. And I'm going to try just using this 80 grit roll like disc to remove material. I'm thinking a few thousandths at a time, so this is going to be a very iterative process. Uh, removing some material, doing a test fit over on the machine, and uh, coming back and grinding some more. Okay, I've been through about four iterations of grinding these touch points here on th these three spots. I did not grind this one because that didn't need to be ground. And now I'm getting, uh, I've got 82 thousandths here and it's just, just fitting almost all the way around. It's just a tiny bit tight up here. Um, but I'm going to call it good, so that's pretty concentric. Much better than it was when we started out. Before I put that stator on one last time, I need to install this inner fan duct. Well, the rotor just lightly placed on the shaft. Uh, I wanted to check the clearance on the stator. And I've got a 10,000 uh, feeler gauge here, and it's going in pretty nicely all the way around. There's one spot that is rubbing a little bit here. But anyway, so I've got clearance all the way around the, between the rotor and the stator, so I shouldn't get any rubbing. I guess I'm surprised how close that clearance is. It's ten thousandths. Incidentally, I am not able to get this retaining nut for the rotor threaded on. No matter what I do, it's cross threading. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It's a weird size. It's a seven eighths nine pitch thread. Well, I picked up a seven eighths nine uh, tap. So I'm going to see if I can chase these threads on this retaining nut for the rotor. Try to get that motor going. Get a little cutting fluid on here. Just 
turn them pretty easy so it's not removing too much material. At the suggestion of a member on the old wood, woodworking machine forum, uh, I've taken a nut and cut it in half and I'm clamping it in place and then uh, using it to kind of burnish and reform the threads that may be um, malformed. So I've got some cutting fluid and some polishing rouge on this uh, in hopes that it will polish out the, the um, threads a little bit. So this is like the fourth or fifth time that I've done this. And I'm hoping that when it's when I'm done I'll be able to get that retaining nut on. It's going on a little further by hand now. I'm going to go ahead and put on the spinner wrench. It's pretty tight, but it is going on much better than it was before. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so now we're in position to put the rotor on. Really tight right through there. I want to make sure the inside of this rotor is really, really clean. Okay, I've got the inner fan duct on, I've got the inner fan on. These, these bolts are all torqued up. Uh, once this goes on, I do not want to take it off again. So the motor belt also has a little cooling fan duct. There we go with the stator. Uh, so I'm going to have uh, black, white, and red going to L1, 2, and 3. Uh, the red would be the wild leg off of the rotary phase converter. And um, I'm just going to hook that up for now and, and test the starter.
Okay, I got the rotary phase converter running over there. Let's see if this thing starts. Okay, yeah, so the contact is working. I realized just a little bit ago that these rings without the chip breaker and pressure bar on them, they're free to drift into the cutter head. So before I spin this thing up, I'm going to pull these over to the side with some tape. And I'll put some in three other spots around the perimeter in both, both ends.